What would happen if Yuji and Megami encountered Kashimo in the Killing Games instead of Akari? How would these two handle running into a character as hot-headed and powerful as Kashimo? Would they be able to reason with him? And if they aren't, would they be able to put their heads together in order to take him down? In order for Yuji and Megami to end up in Tokyo Colony 2, a few key things in the story would need to change or shift slightly. The first and most important thing to change would be the intentions of Yuji and Megami going into the Killing Game. Rather than go to Tokyo Colony 1 where Higuruma is to get points themselves, Megami would have to decide that it makes more sense for the duo to scout out Angel, determine whether or not she can be reasoned with, and even force her to help them if worse comes to worse. While the two are doing this, Hikari would enter Higuruma's colony instead of them and get those 100 points one way or another. Sending their senpai, a character who has been hyped up to be even stronger than Yuta, to go up against a person with 100 points within the games is a fairly logical step, and this would allow Megami and Yuta to search for another key part of their plan, while Megami is assured that Sumuki is safe in the background. Now, once Yuji and Megami enter Tokyo Colony 2, they would likely be immediately split up due to the effect of the barriers, and this is where the fun would really begin. Due to Kashimo's ability to lower his cursed energy so much that even Panda could not sniff him out, neither Yuji nor Megami would be able to sense his cursed energy before it is too late and Kashimo is already in front of them. Immediately, this fact combined with the separation of the two characters puts us at a crossroads. In scenario A, the person Kashimo meets initially is Yuji, and as you would expect, in scenario B, Kashima would find Megami first. Jumping directly into the first scenario, I envision this only going poorly. As soon as Kashimo appears in front of Yuji, he'd be in hot water as Kashimo's hit first, ask questions later mentality would lead to him instantly lunging at Yuji ready to fight, just like he did with Panda. Now, unlike Panda, I think Yuji would be able to read and counter this initial attack, blocking Kashimo's would-be kill shot before quickly realizing his mistake and being flooded with enough electricity to shut down his body for a brief second. A a second that Kashimo unfortunately would not give him to recover. His ruthless approach to combat would lead to Yuji getting hit with an insane combination of attacks that not only damage Yuji physically, but continuously stun him, leaving the option for counterattacks out of the question. Kashimo is also clearly on a different level of physical strength, even when compared to Yuji if you look at his fight with Hikari. In this one exchange, Hikari and Kashimo show that they punch around shipping containers as easily as Yuji punches around cars. Now, I'm not 100% sure if this is an intentional parallel on Gege's part to demonstrate the power difference, but even if it's not, it's clear to see that the casualness in which Kashimo and Hikari throwing around something that is around 8,000 pounds clearly outclasses Yuji's strength feat of punching a car at Yuta Okotsu. Now, in theory, Yuji would actually have a significantly better chance against Kashimo than Panda did. His superior physical stats and knack for martial arts would lead to him being a superior hand-to-hand -hand combatant than Panda by a long shot. Unfortunately for him, a majority of sorcerers that even make contact with Kashimo's body become plagued with the electric effect of his cursed energy and would subsequently lose any and all advantage that they may have gained. As shown in chapters 184 and 186, Kashimo's lightning-like cursed energy usually is enough to stun anyone who makes contact, with Akari being an exception because of his ridiculous amounts of cursed energy. Yuji not having the same level of cursed energy would be put in a pretty precarious situation. Any hits that Kashimo land on him would have a doubly negative effect on his body, and even if Yuji could find an opening on his own, he would never be able to follow up with any combination of attacks that could finish off the super durable Kashimo. You may be able to argue that his insane, innate amount of physical toughness would allow him to have a higher resistance to electricity than most, but even without that effect on, Kashimo is simply too durable too strong and too fast for Yuji to beat outright, leading to him getting pummeled just like Panda. Now, after Yuji is thoroughly beaten, Kashima would likely pose the same question that he does with all of his victims, asking the whereabouts of Ryom and Tsukuna. Considering that Kashima was able to notice Panda's slight pause as an indication of his knowledge on Tsukuna's whereabouts, I see no reason that he wouldn't be able to do the same thing for Yuji, especially considering, in character, Yuji's a very, very bad liar. After becoming aware of that fact, I can see Yuji either refusing to say anything and getting a hole blown in his chest by Kashimo's signature lightning, or asking why Kashimo wants to meet Tsukuna with the hopes of stalling for Megami's arrival. And with this question, he would be met with a pretty straightforward answer. Kashimo wants to fight Tsukuna, and he's simply trying to find anyone in the games that can get him closer to fighting 
the strongest sorcerer in history. Yuji hearing this would likely be flooded with the memories of guilt of the Shibuya massacre and absolutely refuse to lead Kashimo to Tsukuna, deciding that he's done all he can at this point for Megami and Gojo and that the best thing he can do for the world is die, he would likely allow Kashimo to kill him taking 15 fingers of Sukuna with him. This option is the one I see occurring more often than not, just due to Yuji's own opinion on his life at this point. Now, contrary to what seems like popular belief, Sukuna wouldn't be able to interfere in any meaningful way once this situation comes to pass. The best thing he could do is simply revive Yuji after he dies, but as demonstrated in chapter 11, Sukuna himself can't forcefully take over Yuji, barring super, super specific circumstances, like Yuji being fed 10 fingers at once while unconscious in Shibuya. Even if Sukuna were to heal Yuji's wounds against his will, this wouldn't result in him being able to force himself out of this position. The only way he could interfere now is by calling the binding vow he made with Yuji to the surface. In the event that he does this, Sukuna would have wasted a key part of his master plan and wouldn't even be able to do anything to Kashimo, as part of the agreement states that Sukuna himself can't kill or hurt anyone during his minute of freedom. The best thing you could argue is that Sukuna would maybe run away, which I deem to be extremely out of character for him. This means that, at best, you could argue that Sukuna would revive Yuji right then and there using Reverse Curse Technique. But if Kashimo notices this revival and attributes it to Reverse Curse Technique, it'd be no trouble destroying Yuji's entire body, including his head, erasing 15 fingers of Sukuna and Yuji for good. Yuji's own lack of self-preservation and regard for his life would lead to the end of his time in Tokyo Colony 2 rather quickly, and the end of Scenario A. Now, Scenario B, much like Scenario A, would have Kashimo encounter one of the two sorcerers alone, in this instance, Megami. I mentioned earlier that I think Megami and Yuji probably wouldn't be able to sense Kashimo's cursed energy before it's too late, but Megami has an alternative way of finding Kashimo before Kashimo finds him. The reason I say this is because we see that Megami uses Nue in Chapter 161 to search the area for Yuji. It's implied from his own thoughts and internal monologue that if Nue can't find him in the surrounding area, the colony must be much larger than Shibuya. This means, to me, that Nui can quite quickly and easily cover swaths of land as large as Shibuya, meaning that if Kashima were anywhere in the immediate vicinity, Nui would be able to locate and alert Megami of the sorcerer's presence, giving Megami the opportunity to prepare for a potential fight or attempt to make an ally in the hopes of finding Angel faster. Now, due to Megami's extreme caution when it comes to old age sorcerers, I imagine that he would want to go down a peaceful route if possible, but he would also be fully prepared to fight against a powerful sorcerer considering that he thinks they are generally more aggressive. Just like with Yuji, the instant Kashimo recognizes a player, I envision him making a mad dash towards Megami, ready to kill him in one attack. Now, where Megami lacks Yuji's physical abilities to avoid an attack like this head-on, I think he has preparation, intelligence, and a level head on his side, allowing him to either summon Divine Dog to relocate or dive into his shadows to narrowly avoid harm's way. Even with Megami being able to avoid Kashimo's first attack, I think one thing would become very very clear to him. Whoever this guy is, he's strong. Probably way too strong for Megami to fight up against long term. Even with the small amount of prep he did to go up against a sorcerer like this, I don't think that Megami does that much better than Yuji, if at all. Because of his weaker constitution, even one wrong hit could finish the fight, and merely touching him presents a problem in and of itself. I could see Megami using his diverse abilities to make it a bit tough for Kashima to get rid of him, but that would only delay the inevitable. Shadow hopping, using Nui to gain some distance, and even rabbit escape would only allow Megami to keep Kashima at bay temporarily, as his stamina and bag of tricks would eventually run low. Unlike Hikari, Megami doesn't have the ability to ignore all damage that Kashima deals out via healing, nor does he have the physical stats to get up close and personal with him without immediately going to see God. Now, I think there are very, very, very small chances that Megami could have at gaining the upper hand against someone like Kashimo, but I'll save those ideas for the third and final scenario of this discussion, considering that it's much more likely to get off there. In this scenario, though, I think the fight would end with Megami being forced to use his domain expansion out in the open, with no real place to keep Kashimo trapped, unlike his fight with Reggie. Due to Kashimo's enjoyment of fighting and bullheadedness, I can see him not immediately leaving the obviously incomplete domain of Megami, rather opting to stay within its range and beat the shit out of Megami within it. In the event that Kashimo decides to just fight Megami within his domain, the domain would give him a much better fighting chance against the absolutely monstrous strength that Kashimo possesses, being able to make shadow clones, 
multiple versions of one Shikigami, and even dropping elephants onto his opponents when needed. But eventually, either Megami's stamina would run out, or he would get hit with one well-placed bolt of lightning, finishing both the fight and Scenario B. The last situation that I'll be going over in this video, otherwise known as Scenario C, is a situation in which Megami and Yuji are together when they encounter a hostile Kashima. As you may expect, this is probably the situation that they are most likely to survive, considering that there is some strength in numbers, and together they compensate quite a bit for each other's weaknesses. Yuji has the physical stats that Megami lacks, and Megami makes up for this by having a high combat IQ and a ton of variety in his moveset, something that Yuji currently lacks altogether. That being said, even even if they were to have completely synced up attack, if their teamwork was 100% efficient, 99 times out of 100, Kashimo rips through them as if they were made of tissue paper. His lightning cursed energy properties are just too difficult for them to get around, and even if he didn't possess a shield of cursed energy that made it tough to even get touched by him, his punches would quickly overwhelm the two sorcerers, and a lightning bolt that could be charged very quickly would spell defeat for our main characters. Now, while they are at an overwhelming disadvantage against Kashimo, I meant mentioned earlier that I do think there is a slight chance that they can beat him. You see, water is Kashimo's biggest weakness just due to the lightning properties of his cursed energy, and Megami, being as smart as he is, should be able to figure this out very quickly after coming into contact with the cursed energy properties. If for some reason he doesn't know how water would interact with Kashimo's cursed energy, he would even be able to test his theory by temporarily bringing out Max Elephant to douse Kashimo in water. If he is able to pull this off and force Kashimo to shut off his cursed energy even for a second, then he would be able to get in a few much needed hits without fear of being shot, and confirm that Kashimo would be helpless within the water. Now, even if this theory is confirmed, actually getting Kashimo in the water would be a completely different story. Because unlike Akari, Yuji and Megami don't have a real viable way to transport Kashimo into the ocean of Tokyo Colony 2 against his will. Their only hope would be to catch a ride on Nue and head towards the sea in the hopes that Kashimo will relentlessly pursue them. If somehow they're able to pull this off, they could possibly pull together a plan to get Kashimo in the water and suppress him there. Keep in mind, what I'm saying is a long shot among long shots, and I'm well aware of this fact. This plan relies on Megami figuring out that Kashimo's cursed energy properties make him susceptible to water attacks, then relocating the fight quickly enough to not die, and inconspicuously enough to actually convince Kashimo that he isn't being tricked. They then have to actually get someone significantly stronger than them in the water and not die from the poison and heat that comes with Kashimo's forced bath. Oh yeah, and most importantly, they have to do this all before Kashimo charges enough to send lightning through their chests, or just punches them to death himself. So yeah, while in theory the idea I laid out is possible, in practice it's essentially a non-factor in the outcome of this hypothetical. What happens 99.999% of the time you replay this scenario is Kashima running up on both of them, tasing them with his cursed energy before caving in their skulls with his overwhelming amounts of physical might. Overall, I think it's pretty obvious that Yuji and Megami don't have what it takes to enter Tokyo Colony 2 and come out alive. While there are very far-fetched ways you can imagine them winning, I think just like with my Sendai video, you can see that these two aren't quite matching up to their senpai just yet. This was a fun hypothetical to go over, and if you missed the first video of this series, make sure to go check out what I think would happen if Yuji and Megami entered Sendai Colony. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one.